Hickok 45, and I feel like a cowboy today. And there's a bad desperado right there. Yeah. <laughs> Woo, but a two liter. It's two liter time. I'm going to get two more of them. <laughs> and a pot. Let's finish him off. Yeah. Three shots to get that pot. Are we empty? Yes. Model 92, Rossi. Yes, that's what I have. And if you have a lever gun in your hand, you do feel like a cowboy. You know that if you've ever held one and you've ever seen a Western. Or maybe you've ever been a cowboy. Uh, this is the 357 Magnum, 38 Special, either one. Uh, the Rossi, made in Brazil by Taurus, actually. They, they've gone through some changes over the years, and I can't keep up with them. I don't even try, but I think it lasts a few years. Uh, these have been made by Taurus, and they're imported under the name of, let's see, it's uh, Braztec. Braztec, okay. <laughs> and uh, made in Brazil by Taurus. Uh, shipped into Miami and then on to other places out on the range, right? It is a Model 92 you know, replica, I guess you'd say. If it, I guess if it's not a Winchester, it's a replica, right? Uh, it's hard to know these days, isn't it? So these are a low-end uh, Model 92. That's what it comes down to. The, and, and you know that if you're familiar with Rossi, some of these firearms. They're not as expensive as uh, you know some, some of the remakes by Browning or Winchester or the old ones, of course. Line. This is a, a fun gun, uh, a pistol caliber carbine, really. I, I guess you could say, couldn't you? When you think about it, that the Model 92 was uh, in some ways the original pistol caliber carbine. I mean, there were other rounds that were what we would call, <coughs> excuse me, pistol caliber, you know, lever guns like the well the first one the uh, well volcanic you know let's go on to the, the henry uh those are pistol rounds basically but uh most of them were not in carbine form you could probably say that the 92 was first popular uh, pistol caliber carbine of uh, 1873 which this was designed to replace really uh, the model 92 uh was uh, the 73 was generally heavier bigger and longer in almost all cases i think there were some shorter ones made but but not in this configuration i don't think this has a 16 inch barrel and where well, it's a little over 16 maybe by a quarter or something but it's a lightweight uh low cost at least relatively speaking uh lever gun model 92 based on the model 92 which is uh, a really strong gun it's a durable gun it's it's a classic you know i even say that if you're familiar at all you know that the model 92 it will live on forever uh yeah i mean it's the kind of gun you would expect john browning to have made right oh wait a minute he did he designed it and uh it's just an incredible design with those two locking lugs. It's a miniature 1886, basically. You know, the two, that's always the uh, indicator. If you see a gun with those two lugs coming up through it right there, that's Model 92 or Model 92 replica, whatever you want to call it, reproduction. Now, John Browning's did not have the, the safety there, but, you know, times have changed, so you get that on, on these models, okay? And, and there are people who kind of redo these, because these are again they're low now they're about 500 bucks or a little more uh depending on where you buy it but that's a lot less than these things generally sell for these uh, 92s a lot of these lever guns if you've noticed or looked at them and i'll put some more ammo in that was some of my hand loads i was shooting let's shoot some federal uh 357 magnum uh a lot of these lever guns made but whoever makes them whatever italian company whatever american company whatever they just tend to be fairly pricey. They, uh, my gosh, go look at an 1873 or a uh, uh, a Henry. Okay, Let me make sure we're not. And they're going to run a thousand, twelve hundred, thirteen hundred. You know that kind of money sometimes. So, so you know, you, you when I say five hundred dollars, that sounds cheap. I don't know what I've done here. Uh, did I? Okay, it's on fire. I have a piece of something stuck in there. I don't want to force it too much, but I'll force it. I'll push it a little harder. Hmm, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's pull that round out. And I usually have a screwdriver on the table for when this kind of thing happens. 
so let's just pull out my knife here safely we'll just get hold of the rim and pull it back out and well that's i mean it's coming out very simply it's not like wedged in there or anything if it got started in the wrong way or what yeah i don't know what that was about i haven't i have shot it four or five different times over the last week or so i've not had any issues so on camera that's when they happen and that's why <laughs> one reason we do these live so if things happen uh you can witness it okay i won't have to tell you about everything that happens okay it is brand new one thing uh that you get with these newer a uh, lot of the uh, lever guns is this loading gate uh is is sharper the edges are sharper until it breaks in and you know you've loaded it several times and you've kind of gone through that process okay so let's uh put one in here well i didn't get that one all the way in i might have a piece of lead stuck in there or something get yeah i don't have a screwdriver i'm gonna be careful here i know my limitations okay i do know my limitations so i'm not gonna do anything stupid like punch on that primer or something this is supposed to hold eight rounds there we go eight plus one okay and that that was probably the eighth round so i don't know if i got some a piece of lead in that uh magazine or what happened there so we'll continue on and see how it goes all right let's shoot a can or something there let's go on over and try a red plate all right let's pop him again low i think <laughs> i think it's pig time Let's go for a ram. These magnums ought to knock him down, yeah. Yeah, they hit pretty hard. Try that other ram. Yeah, they do. Turkey time, chicken time. Oh, we got another round. Let's go for a pig. Oh, I saw that just over. Uh, one advantage is you can shoot hot magnums, of course, in a rifle. These are strong guns, and uh, and you can and you get, of course, 16 inches in your barrel, so you get more velocity. So they make a nice little hunting rifle, uh, depending on what you're hunting or plinking, just whatever you're doing. So we'll see if I got something dirt or lead in there. Let's try uh, one thing I've been impressed with uh, over oh, the last few days. And again, until today, I haven't had any issues, uh, is that it, it seems to feed 38 specials just fine. Okay, I was going fine. And that is one issue you can get with some lever guns, is they'll feed the longer cases of the 357 Magnum just fine. But then when you uh, you go to 38 Special, uh, you know, they'll of course go into the, chain, into the magazine without any trouble, but then they don't want to cycle you know they're and, and that's understandable i mean it's pretty impressive if you can make a rifle a lever gun that will handle you know like both links okay take that one out that's trying to get an extra one in there all right so once you make a liar out of me it seems to cycle pretty well let's try i don't know let's put some on this target cowboys cowboys rule I was trying to be careful. I'm going to go for a two liter. <laughs> and how about a, oh, there's a jug. Wow. That's just, there's another jug. And let's try the red plate with one of these. Not sure whether it hit or not. I think I went low. Okay. So it cycles those and uh, cycles the others. Uh, so, again, it's new, and it's uh, kind of edgy. You got your, your edges, 
And let's try, we tried uh, Magnums, the 30 Special. Let's go back to my Magnums. These are kind of a light Magnum that I load. There we go. One thing that I know uh, some people do, they'll have gunsmiths do, is they'll lighten up the spring on the loading gate. And what I would do if it were mine, I would maybe even do that, but I would also take a stone and I would smooth out that, that edge there uh, so it's hard, easier on your fingers when you're loading. That's one, one reason I'm using this method, which I don't always use. Uh, some guns load like butter. Some, uh, uh, like the 1873, it's just like butter. And uh, some of the Marlins too. It just depends on the firearm and how much you've used it and how it's broken in. And uh, I guess that was some of the issue with this one. It's just not broken in or I got a little piece of lead in there or something. And, uh, getting in the middle of everything. So here we go again. I have to push him in there. Am I trying to get too many in? I guess I am. I'm used to being able to load. I'm going to bring a screwdriver right here next time. I'm used to being able to load about 10 or 13 in my lever guns. And uh, of course I don't count while I'm sitting here on camera. But uh, I'm used to being able to put more in there than this. And that's one of the disadvantages you have, a, a, if you regard it that way, it's a 16 inch barrel. So you get eight rounds in the mag, whereas your 20 inch barrel, 24 or whatever, and a lot of lever guns, you do, you get 10, 12, 13 round capacity. Okay. All right, let's get this guy. <laughs> oh, we soaked our target over there. That's okay, maybe it'll dry out. <laughs> Time to send it. Oh man. Well, I can tell the difference on the velocity of these things. We'll try a pig. Yeah, gotta hit it. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Nice. What else needs to be exploded? Oh, there's a two liter or a uh, 12 ouncer. <laughs> we got another round. Uh, oh, we haven't shot the gong. What is wrong with me? Um, put the last round there. Pop the gong. Yeah, if you've never shot a lever gun, they are just fun. I don't know how many times I've told you all that. We got to shoot just a couple more times, don't we? How about a 38 special? 38 special. Now these are again because they're from Federal hollow points. I'm shooting hollow points. Uh, just some relatively flat-nosed uh, 38 Special, cheapest thing you could find, you know, working something like this. Uh, I'm if it has a flat nose on it. Now I'm shooting these partly because they're free, uh, but also, you know, with that hollow point, you know, as we've demonstrated before, can never, can never I'll tell you too many times. You've got in that magazine tube, you've got that head against the the primer. See. So, you know, a flat nose or hollow points, even better. There's nothing touching the primer <laughs> except air. So that way under heavy recoil, which you don't generally get with, you know, 357, but yeah, it's heavy enough. I'd rather not have a pointed bullet against the primer of the one in front of it. Okay, so, so these are just what the doctor ordered. And you notice I'm not using the safety. I, I just treat it like a, an original uh, configuration uh, lever gun. And I use the ha that hammer's cog, like, so what? There's nothing in the chamber. We know that. Uh, when I fired the last time or whatever, you know, it's just, I just don't cock it unless I'm ready to shoot it. And there's a round in the chamber. So just treat it that way. Okay. So shoot some 38 specials here. Hollow points. Makes it pretty versatile. Maybe keep track of how many I, st ouch, stuck in there. Barrel's getting warm. See if I can get that one in there finished up I'm like a, like a new gun with a, ah, it's still stiff. You know, I might be trying to put too many in. Were y'all counting for me? I believe that's it. It holds, yeah. <laughs> and that's what you'll find. Uh, most of you already know this, but a 357, you know, is just a little bit longer than a 38. And so where it'll hold eight 357s, it is probably going to hold seven 38 specials, but then it still comes down to the bullet that's loaded in a 38 special 
how much it is, how deeply it's seated or how big it is. So it's conceivable, depending on just how the how the measurements work out, and you just learn that through experimentation, it could hold seven 38 specials, but just barely. Like maybe that's what's happening here. Or it might hold the six, I don't know. So it just kind of depends. All right. If you want more rounds though, you want the 10 to 15 rounds, you want a longer barrel. That's simple. But you notice that that does cycle nicely. Let's shoot that coffin down there, right in the middle. Yeah, sights are right on. It it just cycles them right up, which is a which is a nice surprise. I'm gonna go for the gong a couple more times. Click. So. You know, not bad. Uh, just needs to be broken in, I think. It's a Model 92. You can slick it up. You can use it. You can sit watching westerns. Do that. That is one of the criticisms of, of the Rossi. When you go down to a $500 lever gun, there's a reason it's $500 instead of $1,000 or $15. It's, uh, it's, it's just what it is. You know, it's going to be a little rougher, but the basic gun is there, and it can be smoothed out. I know... There's a whole industry around that because these are used in cowboy action shooting pretty much. And there are even gunsmiths who specialize in them. Yeah, send me your Rossi and I'll turn it into the smoothest firearm you've ever seen and you know, that sort of thing. Because you don't have a lot of money in it. Uh, and uh, so you can put a few more hundred bucks into it and make a interesting gun out of it. And the wood's not bad. It's uh, some Brazilian, you know, type of wood, but it's not, it's not, not bad. Fit and finish is... It's okay. It's a little blocky. Again, it's a it's a five hundred dollar gun, so that that's what you get. So uh, the thing, and you know, if you have these, I've, I've had a couple before this. I, in fact, I had one for John. We traded them years ago, but I had a forty four Magnum, I had a three fifty seven, and uh, uh, was going to use it in cowboy shooting. And then I ended up with the Marlin, and just ended up not shooting it much. So I, we traded them for something. But uh, they're solid. They have a reputation, I think, for being a solid gun. It's just they're usually not going to start out as smooth. And you saw some of that demonstrated today. They're not going to be a finely finished, you know, browning that, that loads like butter, like my 1886 and that sort of thing. But uh, they, they, you start out with a good frame. A, uh, the mechanics of it, it's, it's made well. Just doesn't uh, generally have all that uh, extra care and I guess fine polishing and that sort of thing so you know what I gotta do a couple more shots can, can, can I do it just a couple more sorry John I'm getting tired try a couple more of the magnums I think there's something about that 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 nose uh, that it doesn't like on these particular ones I don't know if it hangs up on me there sometimes okay I just gotta shoot maybe four How's that? Okay, there's four I can get that one in there. A little, uh, yeah. Okay. I'm not even gonna try again though. Let's only get four in there. All right. All right. Four magnums. Let's try. You know what? I'm gonna knock that turkey off that stand over there if I can. There it is. Red plate. Bone. Gone. And the last round, let's put him on this uh, two liter soap target. A little too much two liter time today. We got it, we got it flying everywhere. Boom. Wow, that magnum round went through the paper. Can you believe that? So anyway, uh, Rossi 357, you know, they, they start out a little rough sometimes, but uh, not a bad gun for for the money at all and uh with uh, the price tag on them you can afford to you know take some time smooth them up a little bit maybe even have somebody work on them if you need to or want to but uh nothing like a lever gun and uh, this one's a little shorter maybe than i my preference but it, it is also by the same token pretty handy i mean it doesn't weigh much and uh balance as well just for trekking around the woods or plinking whatever you might want to do with it it would have a disadvantage in cowboy action shooting being this short 
because generally you load 10 rounds before you know you proceed with your event. So well, I mean you could use it, you just have to put a couple more rounds in on the clock. But uh, the Rossi version of the Model 92, uh, not bad, life is good. Hi, I'm Zeke with the Sonoran Desert Institute and here at SDI we're extremely proud to be sponsors of the Hickok 45 channel. You may be asking yourself, well, what is SDI? SDI is an affordable, fully accredited distance learning education program. We have an emphasis in gunsmithing and firearms technology. If you decide to become a gunsmith, you'll need to learn proper gunsmithing techniques. And while some people will use an apprenticeship program to gain these techniques, a formal education will ensure an organized, more comprehensive learning environment. But when you choose a gunsmithing school, it's still kind of difficult. So it's very important that you choose a gunsmithing school that meet the following criteria. First, look for a nationally or regionally accredited program. And whether distance learning online or through a brick and mortar ground program, a gunsmithing program should always have a hands-on element. And finally, make sure you look for a school with high student satisfaction. Find reviews online, check out its Facebook or other social media, or get on the same social media sites, find some alumni, and ask to speak with them about their experience. And while we're not at SDI today, I do have some of the firearms I've learned to work on and built myself through the SDI program. So let's go take a look at them. Okay, maybe not, we'll just get, seriously, can I not get a chair that fits me? I'm a big guy, dude. So I guess back to what we were originally talking about. Above all else, find the school that's right for you. It's not always going to be the distance education programs or the brick and mortar ground schools that are for everybody. Just make sure you do your research on multiple options before you make that decision. But if you want more information on our gunsmithing school, just go to www.sdi.edu or call us at 1-800-336-8939.